Levees and flood walls are both flood barriers. By holding the water away from the building, they do more than keep the building dry. They also prevent damage due to unequal pressure against the walls, floating debris, and scouring at the foundation. Although levees and flood walls essentially perform the same job, they're very different structurally. A levee gets its strength from its mass and weight. It consumes a lot of real estate. A flood wall gets its strength from its sizable foundation and internal reinforcing, most of which you can't see. A properly built flood wall has almost as much structure below ground as it does above. It may look like a garden wall or privacy fence, but a look inside reveals the differences. Many structural building materials can be used for the construction. Blocks, bricks, poured concrete, even wood. All of them need to be reinforced. The structural material doesn't have to be water resistant even bricks and concrete are porous, but there are several coatings and films that can be applied to them to make them waterproof. There are also additives to make mortar and grout waterproof. In Louisiana, these types of sealants and additives are commonly used in the construction of swimming pools and car washes. Up north, they're sold for floodproofing basements. When choosing a waterproofing material for a flood wall, Find out its life expectancy under the conditions you'll be using. How long will the product be stable on an exterior surface exposed to sunlight or sealed in the fairly airtight dark space behind the brick? And find out if it's resistant to termites and other wildlife. Height is the most important factor to consider when designing a flood wall because as the height of a flood wall increases, the size of supporting structure must also increase. A four-foot wall needs a much larger foundation and more reinforcing than a two-foot wall. In an area where flood water has a significant current, you also need to consider the force of the flowing water and the possibility of debris, like a tree or car, hitting the wall. Have an engineer analyze the special hazards of flowing water and the potential for flood waters to erode soil around the foundation. Before you start digging, Find out where water, gas, electrical, phone, and sewer lines are so they won't be damaged. Your utility providers will come out and mark these lines for you. For most installations on private property, flood wall protection should not exceed four feet. In fact, to protect most homes from floods over four feet, it would be less expensive to raise the home than to build a reliable flood wall. Flood water will try to topple the wall and try to slide it toward the building. Foundations are designed to resist these forces and in some cases to block seepage under the wall. The deeper the foundation, the further the water must travel to seep under it. The foundation doesn't have to be pretty, but it does have to be strong. The widest part of the foundation should be well below the ground level and deep enough to be unaffected by erosion. It is reinforced with steel rebar, which also ties the foundation to the wall. One of the simplest flood wall constructions is the concrete block wall. Once the foundation has set, start building up the courses of block, letting the rebar come up through the holes. Fill all the holes with mortar to strengthen the wall and lock it firmly to the foundation. Build buttresses at the corners and at intervals along the wall. The buttress is a pillar of larger blocks or some arrangement of blocks that makes the wall stronger. The wall still needs a sealant coating or waterproof film. This can be concealed with stucco or brick tile supported directly on the wall. If you're going to hide the sealant with a full brick veneer, design the foundation to support that extra load. Be sure to place openings near the base of the wall so rain that falls inside can drain. Where flood walls rely on a strong foundation and steel reinforcing, the sheer mass and weight of a levee tend to keep it from moving. Still, you want to make sure the levee material bonds well to the underlying soil. Remove grass, vegetation, and topsoil and get down to good solid earth before you start building. Sod removed carefully can be reused. Dig a trench down the center line of your levee and fill it with compacted clay or waterproof cement. This acts as a key to prevent sliding and blocks seepage. 
Be sure to compact the backfill very firmly. Install drain tubes at the base of the levee so rain won't collect inside. Place the tubes wherever water normally flows off your property or contour the lot so water goes to one or two locations and install the drains there. Be sure the soil is compacted around the drain pipes. Water will find any loose spots and turn them into channels, which could spell complete failure for your levee. With the path cleared, the trench dug and filled, and the drain set, you're ready to start piling on the dirt. Add dirt to the levee carefully in six inch lifts. Compact each lift before adding the next one. If clay is needed to reduce the levee's permeability, build the clay up in the center and use local soil along the edges. The first layer will be the broadest, about seven times the intended height of the levee. That width gives you a side slope that is stable and resistant to erosion. Keep adding lifts till the levee is the desired height. A levee is easier to maintain if it has grass growing on it. Other shallow rooted plants are okay, but don't landscape with plants that have large root balls. If you leave openings in the levee, such as for a driveway, plan how the opening will be blocked during a flood event. Panel closures, sandbags, and water inflatable dams can be used for this purpose. Leaving a low rise in the opening reduces your dependence on these temporary barriers. Personal levees can be very effective in protecting property from low levels of flooding. Of all the protection systems, levees are the easiest to raise in an emergency situation. They can be topped with sandbags or water inflated dams. To keep the permanent levee at a low height, design it to be adequate for frequent low level floods and topped with a water filled barrier for the less frequent higher flood events. If the flood threat increases permanently, you can top the levee with a flood wall. One of the newer flood protection systems is a temporary flood wall with a permanent foundation. It's becoming very popular for golf courses and river parks where maintaining a scenic view is important. A short length of this system could serve as a closure for a permanent wall or levee. Here are some important things to remember about flood barriers. Barriers must be strong to withstand the pressure of standing water and possibly flowing water. Have an engineer analyze the risks associated with flowing water. Levees often require barriers to retard underground flow. For flood walls, the foundation usually serves this purpose. A wall or levee system must provide drains for rain that falls inside the barrier when it's not flooding, and a way to remove rainwater when the drains are closed. Burrowing creatures, like crawfish and nutria, are natural enemies of levees and flood walls. Remember, if you're considering building a levee or a flood wall, check with your local permits or drainage department and see if such construction is permitted. Also, check and see if there are any height or setback limitations and whether or not you're going to need a permit.